Hello, this is Chris Minnick with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write mobile-first CSS. This video was inspired by a blog post by Zell Lu, which is available at the URL shown here. Front-end developers need to know how to build responsive websites. When speaking about responsive design, there are two approaches, desktop-first and mobile-first. In Zell's blog post, he discusses the mobile-first approach demonstrates why it's much better than desktop first and shows how to use it. For the sake of simplicity, I've converted the SAS from Zell's blog post into straight CSS. Let's first talk about the difference between a mobile first and a desktop first approach. In mobile first, styles meant for display on mobile devices are applied first. Then, advanced styles and other overrides for larger screens are applied using media queries. Mobile First uses min width media queries. Here's a quick example. In this example, the background color of the page will have a red background below 600 pixels wide. At 600 pixels and wider, the background color changes to green. In a desktop first approach, styles are applied first to desktop devices. Advanced styles and overrides for smaller screens are then applied via max width media queries. Here's an example of desktop first. In this example, body will have a background color of green for all widths. If the width goes below 600 pixels, the background color becomes red. Code for larger desktop screens is usually more complicated than code for mobile devices. For this reason, it makes sense to take a mobile-first approach in order to simplify your code. For example, consider a situation where you have a content sidebar that should take up 100% of the width on mobile and only 66% on desktop devices. To code this from a mobile-first approach, we can use the default width, 100%, for mobile devices and then override it with a media query for larger devices, as shown here. If we use a desktop-first approach, on the other hand, we need to restore the default properties for smaller screens. To achieve the same result requires more code, as shown here. With just this simple example, the desktop-first approach requires two more lines of code and creates more complexity. On a larger site, the savings of using the mobile-first approach can be much greater. Most of the time, min width is enough for coding a mobile-first website. However, there are times when you can use both min width and max width to reduce complexity. Max width comes into play when you want styles to be constrained below a certain viewport width. Consider a case of a gallery of thumbnails. The gallery has three thumbnails per row on a smaller viewport and four per row on a wider viewport. If there are no spaces between the thumbnails, the CSS for this is simple. With empty spaces within each item, it gets a little more complicated. We also need to give the last item in a row a margin right of zero to make sure that it doesn't get pushed down into the next row. But then, it also needs to work when there are four items in a row. If we use the min width query, it would look like this. This doesn't work, however, because we put a margin right of zero pixels in the third item on each row. We'll fix this by resetting the margin of the third item to 5%. This isn't an ideal solution, however, because it repeats the 5% margin right on larger viewports. A better solution is to constrain the nth child selector using a max width query. 
This constrains the selectors to below 800 pixels. They won't affect larger viewports. Now, if you want to show five items per row for even larger viewports, you can use a max width query for the three column size, a min width query for the five column size, and a combination of min and max width queries for the four column viewport size. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks again to Zell for the inspiration. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to web development.